Okay boys, welcome to another video of RBHSP with Mr. Dalton. Today we're looking at conservation of angular momentum, C-O-A-M as it says there. Now this is quite a complicated topic and we'll break this down much further in class, but this video will hopefully give you the base understanding of what the conservation of angular momentum is and how it relates to the golf swing in particular. So for a start, angular momentum is a measure of the rotational momentum of a rotating body or system. This is important as golf as we want to conserve the angular momentum inherent in the golf swing. You should notice quite strong links between conservation of angular momentum with force summation and Newton's second law of acceleration in particular. What we're going to do is start by looking at a couple of sports ESPN sports science videos and seeing how uh, these big hitters generate massive club head speed and therefore greater distance off the tee. Monster tee shots all have one thing in common. Huge club head speed. At 5'11", 168 pounds, Jamie Sadlowski is 3 to 8 inches shorter and up to 107 pounds lighter than his competitors in the Remax World Long Drive Championship. But he can still launch drives that have been measured at over 450 yards. His swing is so powerful that his tee shots even blast through a sheet of 5 8 inch thick plywood. How do you generate so much speed on your club head? A lot of it's wrist strength, flexibility. And when you're not a big guy, flexibility is kind of my biggest friend in this sport. Flexibility is one key to torque, the twisting force Jamie generates around his spine. The greater the angular displacement between his shoulders and hips, the X factor, the more torque that's available to generate massive club head speed. And Jamie's hips rotate 49 degrees, while his shoulders turn 166 degrees, creating an X factor of 117 degrees. That's 58% more than the average pro. Kinetosense triaxial sensors reveal that his wrists snap at an angular velocity of about 2100 degrees per second. The speed and strength in Jamie's wrists, by product of years of pocket training, increases the velocity of Jamie's club head speed to over 145 miles an hour, about 20 miles an hour faster than some of the longest drivers of the PGA Tour. Big hitters like Jamie also generate high club head speeds by using drivers longer than the standard 45 inches. The shaft on Jamie's club is 47 inches. This two inch difference in length increases the linear speed of the club head by more than 4%. But Jamie's incredible distance isn't just due to a longer club. Even with a putter, he hit a shot our radar calculated at 288 yards. That's only three yards less than the average drive on the PGA Tour. Okay, if we get our sequential timing of our movement correct, in the downswing, as our hands approach the impact zone, they slow down. And as the hands slow down, the shaft and head of the club acting as a lever have no option but to speed up, like a whip being cracked. This picture illustrates this perfectly. If we get the timing right and the hands slow down near the impact zone, we achieve a tight turn and significantly more club head speed, and thus acceleration and force being imparted into the ball. As you can see in this freeze frame of Rory McIlroy, which I've done on Silicon Coach, hopefully you can see it, you'll see that the wrist angles are fairly consistent in the early phase of the backswing, as indicated there with the red and yellow angles. As the hands approach the impact zone there, you do see that there's an opening of the, of the wrist angle indicated by the blue wrist angle. Now, in the final part of this picture here, you'll see the hands are crossing the plane of, of the ball. And even though the, the hands are crossed the plane of the ball, you can see how far the, the club head is still trailing. 
this is the whip effect we're talking about. The club head has no choice but to catch up with the ball, and this is what generates such um, significant club head speed, much more than the usual amateur will, will generate. Now, I didn't want to embarrass anybody in particular by putting their, their golf swing up there. It wouldn't be very fair. So let's just assume, and, and when you're looking at your, your videos, you'll be able to tell for yourself. If you haven't conserved this momentum and your wrists have broken early, you'll end up with what, what's looking like the picture on the right there, a gradual turn. And therefore, you're not generating as much speed as you could. You're not summating your forces. You're not um, harnessing Newton's second law of acceleration as, as well as you could have otherwise had you conserved the angular momentum inherent in your golf swing.